for me represents symbolically a spiritual connection. In the sense of the tree of life, the tree of death, the branches reach toward heaven and the roots go down towards hell. The tree is the connection between the two and the tree symbolizes humanity. The tree exists in nature. It falls in the forest and it dies. And then when I get it, it has rebirth into an object. I think of wood as a very noble substance. It's a material that is alive and has very much a memory and a mind of its own. Wood sculptor Mark Lindquist lives on land that was once a pecan processing plant outside Quincy, Florida, not far from Tallahassee. The front part is used for gallery space to display current and past work. The rooms in the back are used for storage and to hold pieces returning from recent shows. When he first started taking his work to shows with his father Mel, who was already an accomplished wood sculptor, Many of the other woodcrafters were not very receptive. Mark was applying ideas from his background in art to a traditional craft medium. But it couldn't be denied the results were striking. Eventually, the art world would take notice. Creativity happens, in my mind, in a dreamlike state. It's about vision and pursuit of a vision. The Meskwaki Indians of Iowa have a distinction between fire that's man-made like flint and steel and fire that's created naturally from a lightning bolt hitting the tree. It's what they call real fire. In other words, it comes from the heavens, or from nature, and it's inspiration, really. Often, it is fire that I have made by many different means, because true inspiration doesn't occur when we want it to. The lightning bolt strikes when it does. In many ways, creativity, it's very important for me that it is spiritually tied that way, that it's real fire. When I was around 10, late 1950s, I began working with my father. He used spalted wood to make bowls out of. Vases were his thing. I grew up having a tremendous knowledge about the woods and about wood lore and forestry and all kinds of things that set the stage for where I would go. I couldn't sell my sculpture. I was still kind of in had this idea I was going to be a, a, a metal sculptor, you know, along the lines of David Smith. I thought that would be a great way to go. Uh, you know, I had a degree in, in fine art. Uh, you know, it was a very complicated time. My first son, Ben, was born, and the reality of having a family hit very hard. And my father commented that it would not be hard for me to make wooden objects and come along with them to a craft fair. At first, we argued 
severely about imperfections and the holes and the pots that I was making. I was burning them, doing all kinds of things that made no sense to him at all whatsoever. But when he saw the reaction of people to it, there was just an immediate resonance. Anyone who looked at the work, just, it was natural. It was like it had always been there. It was Oriental ceramics, the history of Oriental ceramics, right there in wood, in the medium of wood, with a strange dichotomy. Now, there was a, a bowl that couldn't be used, but there was something about it that just struck everyone. They either loved it or they hated it. There was no in between, and there was a lot more loved it. The wood people hated it. How could you do that to the, to the material? What are you doing, you know? It didn't bother me. I really brought everything I had from my education to the pieces that I was making so that I felt that, I had, that those pieces would have the highest integrity. And when I brought them to the craft, fair, craft fairs, there was a, always an explosion. And immediately, those pieces sold. When I was younger, I had interesting ideas about the bowl. What is it that creates a need, a yearning to search, to look at and explore these objects? What are we trying to find? And what about the objects? My bowls are made for people to see, to study, to confront. They are mass and energy from another place. They offer problems and solutions, questions and answers. Its function is to display the beauty of nature and to reflect the harmony of man. The bowl is already full. It contains itself and the space between its walls. I approach almost everything I do with confidence and surety, yet I doubt I'm ever going to get through the thing. I doubt I can do it. I doubt it'll be any good. Until it's done, I'm doubting all the way. I am doubting Thomas, and the peace will make me a believer. When something fails, it is an opportunity. I view failure as a key component of growth. Very important. It's easy to succeed. It's hard to fail. Art is on one side, craft is on the other, and there's a barrier, a translucent barrier between. I prefer to be right in that barrier, to look to one side, to look to the other, and it doesn't matter to me. Whereas art has had a European influence in our country, an Asian influence in our country, art in America is influenced now by craft, which has been a grassroots growth in this country. I believe and have believed from the beginning that American craft is America's truest birthright art form. It is the worker that works with his hands and his heart and his head. You know, it's all these things. So it's come to a point now where there's very little distinction between art and craft. Those lines are blurred. Now, in the 21st century, we are in a unique renaissance. There is work being done today 
that will be looked back on as a renaissance. I think art plays a very important role in contemporary society if it mirrors what is happening in society at the time. I'm not saying that it says what's right or wrong, but rather holds up to society what society is doing. It essentially documents the, the moment of that era. This is an American symbol, really. This shell casing and this loaded ballistic. The piece has many cracks in it, and, and by the time it does get finished, the cracks will be very apparent on the piece. And the cracks speak about the flaws, the flaws, the imperfections of the system and of the symbol. I look at this piece as a monument to our times, in a way, and it's asking the question, is this where we want to be? It's particularly for me poignant today because our position, and the world is just this way, it's poised, it's ready, waiting, it's a threat. The symbol is very powerful in many ways for peace-loving people, a symbol. And for the militarists, it could be a symbol of strength and might, American might. That's what is postmodern about the piece. It's a pastiche, it resonates, it oscillates between these two symbols. It's also ambiguous enough that people will bring to it what they want it to be.